Hello and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Tim Regan and on behalf of Water Tower Research, we're very pleased you have joined us for AI and Technology Hybrid Investor Conference. Our next live presentation comes from OneSoft Solutions, Inc. Please note that you can submit questions for the presenter in the box to the left of the slides. You can also help view the company's availability for one-on-one -on -one meetings through the scheduled meetings tab found on the conference platform. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Brandon Taylor, COO of OneSoft Solutions, Inc., which trade on the OTCQB under the symbol OSSIF and on the TSXV under the symbol OSS. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Tim, and uh, glad to be back again this year at the OTC. It's really exciting to be able to present the story to the audience. And audience, thank you so much for taking time out and watching the presentation. Um, as Tim said, I'm the president and CEO of OneSoft. Uh, before I get started, I thought I'd go over. We're a uh, born in the cloud SaaS solution on the Microsoft Azure cloud platform. We focus in the oil and gas space. We've built a cognitive integrity management, and you'll hear me refer to it as SAIL, solution that really focuses on integrity management and really around oil and gas companies. In the U.S., there's about 2.7 million miles of pipe. About 642,000, 660,000 of that is um, inspected. If you're a liquid pipeline operator in the U.S., every five years, um, you have to inspect that pipe. Um, seven, if you're a gas operator. Just before we get started, I'll kind of take you through kind of what we're doing with the data and specifically around machine learning and AI in the space, um, kind of where we are on that journey. Um, came by the Microsoft Incubator in 2016. It was their very first data science and machine learning incubator. So we're, we're super um, proud of what we've done to date. Some metrics here, I'll give you a little bit. Um, market cap, 97 million. Cash on hand, 4.9 million. Uh, virtually zero debt, uh, huge insider ownership of 26%. So uh, we're highly invested with all of the investors in the stock as well. Um, normal disclaimer, uh, include some forward-looking statements, respect, um, Normal here. So just to give you a sense of what we do, um, reliability standards, um, we effectively basically help pipeline operators. Um, our, our mission statement is to predict pipeline failures to save lives and protect the environment with the assistance of data science and machine learning. Uh, we really help them with their asset integrity programs. And it's very um, an involved process, highly regulated environment um, under Department of Transportation, the Pipeline Hazard Safety Material Agency, PHMSA, um, regulates this industry within the United States. And it's really about reducing their operational risk um, and accelerating. Um, and you'll see as we get through this presentation, Typically about 80% of our customers and the prospects we run into run their integrity management program using a lot leveraging Microsoft Excel pretty extensively. So we're, we're deploying an enterprise wide solution, uh, SaaS solution that really can start aggregating this. And we like to refer to our solution as a data platform. And that really accelerates that efficiency. And then most importantly um, is maximizing the cost savings. And I have some slides on that so we can really kind of talk about where, where we are on that process. Just to give you some historical perspective, we've had consistent revenue, recurring revenue growth over the past 30 quarters. Um, we just closed our fiscal year in December, um, had our um, call on that was we just closed at 10.4 million in revenue, um, which was our second year over year increase of 50%. Um, and we've given guidance for 2024. Um, in the same range, 15, 16 million, and that 50% uh, increase year over year. I'm very proud of, of what we're doing within that space. Pipeline miles under subscription, this is a really important metric for us. Uh, so uh, we really kind of drive everything around miles under subscription. So we've added a couple lines and we'll continue to update this every quarter, but basically, you know, how many miles are operated by our customers? Um, as a customer has pipeline, some of it, they can run tools called inline inspection, pipeline inspection gauges. Um, in the industry, they call those pigs. It has a bunch of sensors around it. They insert it into the pipe. 
um, the product in the pipe pushes it down to take it out, read those sensors, and it's really looking for anomalies on the wall within the pipe. Uh, we, we do no hardware. We actually aggregate that data into our platform and we align it. They've been running these tools for decades. We align that data. Uh, they can't run those tools on all the pipe that they have. Uh, so there's other methods that they do, cathodic protection, um, where they do electrical current along the pipe. And we've started to build modules that can now aggregate that data, chemical injection, um, internal corrosion, where they can't really run these tools. So it's really important for us to measure this operated miles by customers. There's about 2.7 million miles, of which we have about 260,000 or subscription from our customers today. And then also um, the Pigable, where they can run these tools, is about 134 of that 642. So you can see we made significant inroads into kind of just the whole ecosystem within the U.S., and I'll talk about how this is really a global. The U.S. controls about 60% of the miles worldwide, um, so we have another 40% outside. And we're really starting to focus on trying to go out, you know, rest of the world, Latin America, um, EMEA. We just hired our an employee, our first employee in EMEA to start opening up the market. We were at a conference this week, et cetera. So we're really focused on kind of the revenue outside of the U.S. as well. Um, this gives you a sense of the customers that run our solution every day. So, you know, these are uh, a couple of super majors. Uh, these are you know, Fortune 100, uh, 500 companies, very enterprise um, customers. And what we've also seen a trend in the industry recently is that there's a lot of consolidation. Um, so we have 15 customers, but that really represents about 20 pipeline operators because our customers have actually acquired other pipeline operators. Uh, which is really good and when they do that they just onboard their their mileage into our solution and our subscription fees go up as a result of that uh, we've also partnered in industry with c for technologies that's all about risk um, and the industry is moving more to a probabilistic quantitative risk models uh, we've we've signed a technology sharing sharing agreement this is a research organization that's in canada owned by the government I've been doing a lot of research on pipes for decades. Uh, we've taken their probabilistic models, embedded them into us, into our solution. Uh, we're a managed partner with Microsoft, where their go-to um, solution for midstream pipeline operators worldwide. Uh, so we work with them very closely on all deals. And then we just released a solution for crack management, which is about looking at cracks on pipelines. And we've taken industry intelligence and, and T.L. Anderson, Ted Anderson, actually is kind of the leader in that forefront. We've embedded his IP into our solution so all of our customers can get the latest institutional knowledge that's out in the industry and just run it within, operationalize it within their organization through our solution. Just to kind of give you a sense, I mentioned on this, so really, um, to date, uh, just to give you, you know, if you step way back, um, when we first started, our very first client was Philips. We were their very first SaaS solution um, in the cloud. Our first five customers of those four of them, we were their very first cloud solution. We still run our, across pipeline operators where we're you know, going through the very first, you know, IT kind of initiatives with Microsoft to kind of get onboarded through the SaaS. 80% um, of customers and prospects we see run a lot of this process that we replace uh, using Microsoft Excel. So we literally displace thousands of Excel sheets and then they can supplement um, other things within Excel on our solution, export it out, import it back in and all of that stuff. So we really make it as a Microsoft shop pretty cohesive on how they do that. Thought it'd be worthwhile just to share um, a demo. So if we want to start that, and I'll just kind of walk through what, what our solution does, software company uh, really focused on ML, et cetera. So um, let's take a look at that. Okay, um, one of the things that we thought that would make sense is to show this is SIM. So all you need is a browser. Um, you can see this is demo.onebridge, uh, Edge or Modern, Chrome. Um, this is the dashboard. You can see the number of assessments that are in the solution, number of features, anomalies, cracks. Let's get from an AI data science perspective. We have this data across all of our customers. 
gives them, you know, which tools are going to run. And then obviously we're Microsoft shops. We embed that um, assessment planning, you know, full enterprise allows operators to basically compare how these technology that they're putting in these pigs, that they're doing that the line, how they actually compare when they do excavations. We track both the run and the data itself. And then this is where a lot, a lot of integrity engineers, this shows the integration across all the data sets, you know, anomaly information, pipe information, burst pressures, the history of that anomaly through the last 20 years, you know, uh, CIS data, where it is in the world from a geographic information perspective, um, joint views, we have a 3D customization, so you can actually see this visually um, inside the um, pipe. And then, we align all of this data. So again, inline inspection, the CIS, um, all of the separate data sets. This basically illustrates our internal corrosion, a module that we're basically tracking. You know, do you have internal corrosion? What's the chemical cost per system, uh, per mile? How does it rank across all your systems and other dashboards around the immediate threats from a regulatory perspective? Have you repaired them? How many are immediates? Those types of things. So it just kind of gives you a sense for the enterprise level capabilities of the solution. Uh, DIG is really expensive um, program within operators. So it really helps you understand, you know, how am I doing my DIG program uh, by region, uh, by specific system, um, all of the kind of different things that you can do there. And then we have the ability to inject cost into the equation so you can see which systems are costing you the most. Uh, you want to know if you're going to you know, make it this year according to weather on your dig program, what's my weekly burn rate. That just gives you a sense of you know, the enterprise level of the solution and where we're really expanding as we go. Um, so the other thing that we're really focused on as we've done these is we're following you know, Jeffrey Moore's you know, um, crossing the chasm model. We believe that we're in that bowling alley stage. Uh, we've crossed over the chasm now. And we're really, really focused on building out that whole solution. Last year, you know, our core product is core cognitive integrity management, what we call core SAM. That's that, you know, which tools all the way through the dig program. Um, and then we released last year internal corrosion, which really brought in other data sets, like three other core data sets. You know, what chemical am I injecting? Um, the sampling uh, coupons and the sampling pigs as that data comes in and we correlate that specifically to that inline inspection. And we're working on external corrosion, risk management in geohazards, and we just released crack. Uh, so that's really, and we got all our customers are working in private preview, and that's really to fill out, finish out that whole solution because we can start working up through this tornado. And we're working early majority customers, um, which are much more pragmatic. Mm, they're not the early adopters, but you saw the client list. Um, very referenceable for as large of an industry as it is. It's quite small. Uh, we get employees that are our customers go to prospects who then become customers. And it's very referenceable. We just had our first user group conference last October. Highly successful. We'll have another one probably double the size of that. But we're really focused in this early majority section, building out the whole solution is where we are right now uh, around data, which is super important. Uh, the other thing in that early majority is they're pragmatic from an ROI cost economics. So for a few years now, we've really focused on the metrics around that. Uh, our kind of go to market sales approach is a benefit analysis where we're actually aggregating their existing cost. Um, and, you know, whether that's third party resources doing it, if they built in house systems or, you know, just efficiency gains, uh, we plug their numbers into our ROI calculator and then we present back to them a uh, return on investment, which includes net present value, internal rate of return. We're really focused on as we kind of look at pricing, um, we pivoted there, you know, five times from when we started. We've now got it down to a single number on a per mile basis. Um, but we're always looking at that in relation to MIRR internally, because um, if we can show, you know, modified internal rate of return greater than, say, 20 percent, uh, it's really helping us. And as we aggregate more data and really start understanding where where our cost benefit relates to you know, the willingness. And what we find is you know, we have no competition. We, we, it's always us versus what they do today, typically. 
Um, so really it's about that cost savings model. And then for us, it's really about change management. That That's really the thing that people always ask me, you know, why isn't it, why aren't everybody sign up? These are big, large enterprise organizations that takes them a while to get through the change process. When they get through it, then it's very, you know, wide, deep moat with lots of white space. And we're really focused on that MIRR as we go. In relation to AI and ML, um, we really view our platform, um, I like to say the Google of integrity management. Um, so we have today about 133 million anomalies that are ingested and that we track across the entire pipeline um, and network infrastructure in the US and Canada. We have a client in Australia. So really, as we onboard new customers, you know, we've seen 7,100 ILI. I think that's really getting closer to 10,000. We're doing 1,000 a year. You know, we'll, we'll continue to add new customers. Um, they're making, you know, hundreds of thousands of integrity management decisions. And then what's really important is that we're now bringing in that non-destructive. Um, we've got a volume of data on non-destructives when they go to excavations. 65,000, um, and that really helps you understand, you know, how well are the tools doing in relation to am I digging the right stuff, all of that stuff. So what we're really focused on, we continue to do data science experiments. Um, what we want to look for is that prediction factor, you know, this data, this, this, and this will actually help us reduce that risk and actually get to predictive failure state on the pipeline. In order to do that, our data science team believes that we need not just lots of data, but a diverse set of data, soil, uh, cathodic protection, CIS data, DCV, so all kinds of data sets. Our mode has been today is that we're really aggregating the data. Um, we've already embedded Microsoft's um, Power BI natural Q&A. How many dents do I have by state? And it automatically knows that nomenclature and an operator can get the results instantly across, you know, 10,000 miles of pipe. Uh, we'll really start focusing on um, embedding Microsoft's Copilot um, so we can kind of get to that level of analytics. But we really need to get data to where we need to do that. It's kind of where we're focused on right now. Some investment highlights, um, first mover advantage. Um, you know, when we first started, we probably had three to five year head start on just being in cloud. Uh, IP from, um, we picked up from Philips and uh, owned that IP. That probably gave us another three to five years head start. Uh, we really have, don't see anybody in the rear view mirror from a competition perspective. Uh, we're scaling this globally and aggregating that process and we've really horizontal. Uh, integrity management for the industry, uh, high inside, insider ownership, um, really historical, um, you know, ESG kind of mandates related to that. And then the recurring model is we, we really felt pretty solid. We really haven't had to pivot on our pricing architecture and framework for two, three years now. Uh, SaaS agreements been through, you know, every one of these, you know, Fortune, you know, 500, 100 legal departments. Uh, very few red lines on that. The IT, you know, people are cloud is now fully adopted. Uh, digital transformation is a pretty strong term within industry is moving. And then for us, it really is about data. That that's kind of where we're focused is how do we aggregate more data, um, and and hence why that's really kind of the initiative on these new new modules that we're building. We want to be able to basically bring uh, as much data into the platform which basically allows our data science team to build new algorithms that have never been developed in the industry. That's kind of where we are. So with that, um, I think that we've hit a little over 20 minute mark. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for a Q&A. Again, thank you um, all. And let's take some questions. Um, so John, um, open these questions up. So first question, um, I'll just go through as many of these as we can. So we've got quite a few of them. Um, is true that there are still no legitimate uh, competitors? Um, it is true. Uh, we've just, on uh, our last customer that we onboarded, we went through a formal RFP process. They looked at 14 different types of, you know, third party, you know, engineering, we'll build it, those types of things. It really at the end came down to us and an in-house build. 
right? And that's pretty typical that we see is what we do in-house versus us. Um, we've been to two formal ones, one with the super major, same thing. They went out and looked at 11. Um, when we're doing demos and benefit analysis, you know, in our previous lives in software was, okay, vendor A showed this feature. Uh, how do you do this feature? We, we never have those scenarios. It's, you know, what's your business process? How much is it? You know, let's map out the cost to that. And then we do ROI and then show them how that process would work in our solution. Um, question, we've been able to raise prices for the software. Uh, so up to this point, we are still fully on uh, logo edition kind of mode, right? Our objective is to become the 80% gorilla in the space, right? We want we want to basically own pipeline integrity uh, in the space. So for us, and you know, secondarily, as a data science machine learning company, uh, data is super important for us. We, we have to have the data. And we have a really good reputation in industry. In fact, we get other vendors at our trade shows that we go to is how did you get the pipeline operators to give you the data? Uh, we've had no resistance on that. We're agnostic. We, you know, we're not relying on any other tools. You know, so it's like the first time we've really been data agnostic, uh, specifically customer driven. So for us, it's really about logo addition and data. In our SaaS agreements, we do um, add an innovation escalator. So every year there's CPI or an escalator related to um, renewals year over year as well as these modules that we're building are consumption economic models, meaning that as we release new models, it increases our per mile charge. So that happened with internal corrosion, it's just crack management just came out as we release external risk, et cetera. Um, some variability um, is an example on internal corrosion. You know, it's kind of a tiered by mileage. So um, over time, we have been raising prices, um, this is a very cost conscious industry. Remember, they're running Excel, so there's a paradigm to change. Five years ago, subscription, we had to change our model because people were not quite ready for just recurring subscription models. That's now changed. So yes, we're focused on price, and we do it through innovation escalators and consumption economics, and at some point, we'll just keep evaluating where the market will bear that, mostly in relation to the modified internal rate of return. Uh, question is, what's the TAM for pipeline solutions uh, repurposed for other industries? Yes, so the TAM, we just published that in our MDNA. Um, we actually have a table that breaks it down by solution, so core sim, internal corrosion, et cetera. And this is best as well, we did it like three or four, or maybe five years ago. We just refreshed that. Uh, it's a snapshot in time. You know, we think as we move in internal corrosion, it's kind of what we think the market is, but we learn more every day as we're onboarding new products. Oh, there's another white space thing that we could incorporate into this. So we'll just keep, you know, looking at that every few years to make sure that our TAM. Uh, we have um, from day one looked at our solution from um, water industry. Uh, there's a applicability that we've done some early pilots on that. We really need to get into a self-service model, we believe. Uh, we've got the pricing and the economics right on it. We need to get into self-service. And it'd probably be focused on mainline, um, big, large diameter pipeline and water. And then REL is another area from an infrastructure place um, that we it's a linear asset with anomalies down the asset. So it's another area that we could look at. We're hyper focused right now just to make sure that the white space is within where we are. So that's our competency. We'll make sure we go and get that. When we reverse split the shares to lower the share count, um, it's always something that um, that uh, over the years has come up. And I think there's pros to cons to that on both ways. Um, we have discussed that and we'll continue to look at it. Um, I think there's just different different strategies on how we do that. So, but we do bring that to the board and we do talk about that occasionally. So, question at the end of 24, if you didn't add, you know, number of new logos, would you be disappointed? Um, yes, we're always, so customer acquisition, obviously adding logos is our first and foremost thing. We expected to add um, more logos last year. Those got delayed and lost those deals. This is a very laggard industry from a procurement side. Um, even though we've solved the SaaS agreement, our legal agreement, the IT, 
um, it's still change uh, for organization. And we can even show, you know, really radical ROI, but it's how do we get this embedded? So we spent a lot of time, uh, we just had a new resource to help with onboarding tools, the training tools to, to make this faster um, from that perspective so they could change faster. I'll give you a perspective on our last customer. They signed in September, October. Um, we had to integrate to an existing legacy system. December, they shut that off. January, they went live on our first module. Uh, very significant shortened time frame, but it was still very disruptive to their organization as far as lots of work to do. Uh, so, yes, we would be extremely disappointed. Hence, why we've given guidance um, where we are is because we don't believe that to be the case. Um, one of the things that you may want to look at is we, for those that didn't get to see the demo and you want to see the demo, um, we would be happy to, uh, you know, so we have them on our website, uh, just reach out to OTC and we, we could um, reach out and do one-on-ones, um, be happy to do some demos on that so you can kind of get a sense on what that's for. Question here is um, satellite or GPS data involved in the data. So we do bring in um, the tools that they run on inline inspection. Typically they'll do IMU um, data, which will have X, Y. Uh, and Z data, we ingest all of that data in our geohazard uh, work that we're doing in the innovation lab. That's really about um, that change down the pipe on X, Y every like four inches, right? So we're gathering that data. And, you know, one of the data science things that we have in the lab is to try to prove if there's pipe movement and then specifically string, because I don't know if you follow the industry, there's been some releases around, you know, landslide movement, things like that. Uh, we're really trying to focus on those areas. Uh, will you have to raise capital? Uh, no, the uh, management believes that we have sufficient cash. In fact, our cash increased year over year. Um, one of the beauties about the business and this industry specifically is we figure out what the consumption model would look like at the beginning of a renewal period for the year. Um, and then we get all of our money up front, put into deferred revenue. And then as um, we operate, uh, as the pipeline customers operate the solution, um, it moves from deferred to revenue throughout the year. Uh, renewal comes up, we reassess. Another, so we, we get all of our money typically up front. And then we get that cash. So, you know, we have sufficient cash, we believe, to basically operate the business um, as is. Uh, we've done some hires. Uh, we don't anticipate any open positions anymore. Uh, we'll keep doing that as we onboard new customers. That may change. So we'll see how that is. Okay, um, I think we've hit time. I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time out today um, for watching and listening. Um, we do have one-on-ones. I'm going to turn it back to OTC. Um, please go ahead and feel free to schedule one-on-ones. We'll get the demo so you can see that then. Uh, but thank you so much for taking the time out.